one, don't you? Thank you, Brother Tom. We appreciate that. A Christian's response to COVID. What should a Christian's response be to COVID? Not an unbeliever's response, but a believer's response, a Christian's response to COVID. And the reason I say that is because of the text that I'm going to use. A very familiar text to you indeed. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. You turn over that with, with me if you would. Romans 8, 28. And then we'll look at 29 and 30. And you'll see why I say this is the only could be a Christian's response for this message. Romans 8, 28. You know it by heart, don't you? We know that all things work together for good to them. Listen to what it says. For them that love God and to them who are they called according to his purpose. Now who are they, who is it referring to when it says to them and those who are called? Well, the verse 29 and 30 tells us, whom he did foreknow, that's believers. He chose you in eternity past, believe it or not. Before you was even thought about down here, God had already chosen you in eternity past. That's what the Bible says, right? This, by the way, this is the word of God. We come here and speak to you, whether it's me or anyone else from this pulpit, on Wednesday nights, Sunday nights, revivals. When we preach to you the word, this is God's word. We want to hear a word from God, don't we? Not necessarily from the man. We're just God's spokesman when we use his word. So this is God's word to you this morning. From me to you, he's speaking through my lips to you. I always pray. I say, Holy Spirit, please speak through these lips of clay. Give me an unction, a divine anointing, but I want you to give a word to the people who will be listening to me in church, outside the church, in the parking lot, those who will be listening on radio, and also those who will be watching us on social media. We're back on YouTube again. Uh, someone called me this week and told me they'd watch us again, so I'm thankful for that. But this is from, the, this is from God himself. Now, this verse 28 is referring to those who are believers. Notice what it says again, verse 29. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. That predestinate scares some people half to death. You know, whether or not not being chosen. They get scared thinking about the elect and all that. But actually predestinate right here is referring to those whom he has called and chosen. And his, he, his will is for them to be predestinated to conform to the image of his son, Jesus Christ. He's going to make us more and more like Jesus as we grow on and on in life, as we mature in Christ. It is His will for us to grow and to be more like His Son, Jesus. Sometimes He uses trials and troubles and sometimes the COVID as well, right? To make us more like Jesus. That's what His, his will is. That He might be the firstborn, talking about Jesus, among many brethren. Moreover, whom He did predestinate, them He also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. Boy, there's a lot of meaningful truth in these words. Each one of them, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. It's, it's really a done deal to saying here. Once you are known by God in eternity to pass, according to his foreknowledge, he has called you through the preaching of the word of God, through the gospel of Christ. When you heard that word and you believed it and you trusted Jesus to be your personal Savior and Lord, listen, the Bible says at that moment in time, he justified you. He justified you. He, he, he acquitted you, of, forgave you of all your sins. Past, present, future. Isn't that good news? Thank God for that. Hallelujah. It's a legal term. He finds you as not guilty, thank God. Because what he does at the moment he does that, he puts to your account, your account, the very righteousness of his son, Jesus Christ. He puts Jesus' account and to your place. Isn't that good? You don't have to stand on your own. Whatever you can do, what may, you might do, might become whatever. Your record doesn't matter anymore. It's the record of Jesus. Amen? It's put to your account. And listen, he says here, same tense, he's also glorified. In other words, in the mind and the heart of God, you're just as good for heaven as you are already there. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit of the day of redemption. You cannot lose your salvation. Don't you let anyone tell you that you can lose your sight. You can't do it. If you can do it, then you're going to have to do something with this verse of Scripture. You're going to have to take a pen knife and cut it out. Can't lose it. You cannot lose it. It's a done deal. Now, so he's talking about the believers here. Now, when he says this to believers, he said, All things work together for good. 
It does not say, the Holy Spirit is very precise here. He does not say all things are good for the believer. He doesn't say that, does he? Because we know that disasters, destruction, calamities, diseases, all sorts of bad things, they're not good for the believer. They're not good. Only a moron would say that. That's what the Spirit of God is saying here. He's saying here it works together for your good. God is causing this to work together for your good. The NIV says, and we know that in all things God works for the good. He works for the good for the child of God, for his children. The New Living Translation says this, and we know that God causes, and listen to this, God causes everything, everything to work together. Even, now listen, folks, even the COVID, even the COVID, because we got questions about it. how in the world, Pastor, could this work together for our good? As bad as it is, as frightful as it is, as awful, as horrible as this disease is, and it is all of the above, right? How in the world could God use COVID to work together, you know, for my good, for those who love God, for those who are called according to His Spirit? So it's a big difference for them saying that it is good and God causes it to work together for our good. So as horrible, horrible as it is, as bad as it is, we just got to take God's word for it here, don't we? We've got to just take God's word for it. He's going to cause even this. And again, I'm talking about what the believer's response should be to the COVID virus. Somehow or another, he's going to bring good out of it, cause good to come out of it for the child of God. Now, we've got ideas how that might be. I've got some opinions. I've got some ideas how God can bring good of this, how God can cause this to work together for the believer's life, for your life, for my life. And I've got just some ideas and some opinions, some suggestions. And I want to share them, what I think about it this morning. How this could be used for our good. You want to hear my, my thoughts are? Well, you're going to hear them anyway. i got a captive audience here, right? Now, you can't walk out any time you want to, so you're really not captive. But I hope, you, I hope you'll hang around and just listen to it. How in the world, Pastor, can God cause this COVID as bad as not even Not just only COVID. But anything work together for my good. Well, here's my suggestions here this morning. Number one, and I've got it where you can remember this. This is an easy outline to remember. A, B, C, D. Not like Barney Fife says A, two, <laughs> no, A, B, C, and D. All right? You can listen. You can get that one down, right? That's pretty easy. A, appreciation. Now, I just want you to think about this for a minute. Appreciation. All of this, COVID, disease, the disease, the, the lockdowns, and, and especially concerning the church. Now, we can, we can just think about this word appreciation just for a moment. This should make us really appreciate the blessings of just coming to this place and worshiping God. You know, the old saying is, I heard Brother Tom say it this morning. You don't really, you're not really thankful. You don't really even think about your health until something happens and you lose it. Then you start thinking about, boy, how blessed I was to be good and healthy. I'm going through some issues right now in my life, and I'm thinking the same thing. But we, we really, when we think about what we've lost because of the shutdown, and I've seen so many churches not even having church this morning. I went by a church this morning, had a big, on the marquee, and the sign in the front said, no church services today. Isn't that sad? On the Lord's day, no church services? And it's happened all over, not only our city and our community, but all across the country because of this COVID. But what it should make us think about is, it should make us appreciate the wonderful, joyful times we did have in here worshiping. And let me give you an illustration of this. One morning, a few weeks ago, you know, I, I always come in here early. You know this, I come in here early on Sunday mornings, and I always just come all over this place, and I'm praying, and I'm asking God to bless the service, and make sure the heat's right or whatever. And I, I'm just walking around asking God to pour out His Holy Spirit. And just touch hearts with the message and help me through it as well. But I, I always will end up on that third row from the back, the third seat over, and I'll sit there and I'll just think and I'll pray. You say, why do you sit there? That's the way my mother sat every service. You know, sentimental reasons there, okay? That's the way she sat every service. So I'll just talk to the Lord sometimes. But I was sitting there on this morning in December, and I was just looking at the beautiful, the lights weren't on, didn't have them, but the Christmas decorations. And boy, didn't they do a good job decorating those who did decorate? 
and they just I always do. And then I looked at the tree, it looked so pretty up there. I think Lane and Karen bought that tree and they decorated that. And I think Kim and Sean and Christopher and all of them, Adrian, decorated. But I was just thankful for what, and, but I looked at that and I'm sitting there thinking about, and you know what, the, the, what crossed my mind then? What crossed my mind then, I got to thinking about all the wonderful, beautiful services we have in here through the years at Christmas time. I got to thinking about the cantatas. You know, I got to thinking about the plays. I got to thinking about the dramas. I got to think about all the different things we would do at Christmas. I got to think about the joy, the happiness, the love of just being here, sharing with one another. Those special Christmas services. And you know what I thought? I said, man, it made me that much more depressed. <laughs> I said, how blessed we were just to be able to come in here in this place, you know, and to, to, to worship and enjoy the presence of the Lord and just to enjoy the, not only the preaching of the word, but the beautiful singing, the choirs, and everything else that was going on. How blessed we were. We just, I thought to myself, we just took it for granted, didn't we? You don't think about it till you can't do it, right? So that's one, re that's one way God, I believe, is using this shutdown from the COVID and all this. Uh, it should make us appreciate what we had when we was able to come in this place and just thank God for the freedom, the love, the liberty we had to come in here and just worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What a blessing that is. Amen? Can I get a witness there? Amen. So the first thing is, is just an appreciation. I was not thankful enough just for being able to come in here and take part in the worship service. Number two, the B, okay? The building itself. Now, we look at this sanctuary here. You know, to me, listen, this is a special place. It is a sacred place, you know? It's a sacred place. It is a special place. It is a, it is a place that our God has provided for us the members of Blessed Hope Baptist Church, to come to this place to meet here and to worship Him. But when all that is said and done, it's just a building. It's just, it's just mortar and stone when you think about it. Because it's not really the church. These walls, this building, as wonderful as it is, and again, it is special. I don't want you to lose that. I want you, you know, I want you to think any less that because it is a special, a sacred place, and I think we all treat this as a holy place, don't you? But after all, it's just a place. It's not the church. It's not the church. The church is the ecclesia. Ek, out, see, called out, the called out ones. That's you, that's me, all those who have heard the gospel message of Jesus Christ. And then as a result of that, in the conviction of the Holy Spirit of God, we have trusted Christ and given our hearts to Him. And they are the ones that makes up this assembly of believers. The church is the called out ones. So this building, you see, is just a building itself. But the church, my friends, is you and me. And that's made me think a whole lot about this. And as I think about this, I say, you know, it's, it's made me have a great appreciation just for you as well. Just being able to come into this church and to be together, to fellowship with you, with you, with you, just being here together is something about that. And when you don't have that, you miss it. I look, I don't know about you, but I look forward to the time again when this COVID, this dread COVID is behind us, when this virus is gone, I guess when everybody is vaccinated or whatever, but it's gone, it's past history. I look forward to the time that we can come back in here again, just like we used to. I don't know about you, but I miss Sunday school. I used to love, love to come in here on Sunday school. I used to love to listen to Jack, Brother Jack's corny jokes when he had an assembly, didn't you? Stupid, blonde jokes. But anyway, he had a lot of them, didn't he? But just the assembly, just me together, seeing him up here smiling and encouraging you. I miss that. I miss seeing Brother Danny coming in here and picking on everybody, and just picking and having fun with one and loving on one another. He was the best one I've ever seen at that. And just making you feel good to be here in God's house of worship and being around each other. I miss all of that, don't you? I miss preaching uh, and thank, I mean, miss preaching to a, a, a full house. I really do. I look forward to the time that we can come back in here and the church is full again. And I can look around and I can see some movement. I can hear some babies crying. I, see, I can hear, see some children cutting up. 
I even look forward to the time I come back in again and I can see different ones sleeping again. <laughs> just movement. Just life. I don't know, but I, I miss that. So you see, what this is called, God has caused me to see this as a result of this COVID, this shutdown or whatever, that the building is fine, it's important, but it's not the church. You are the church. It's made me realize that and understand that and know that better now than I've ever known before. I will not take that for granted anymore. Wherever we meet together, where two or three, as, Jack, as uh, Brother Jack said a few minutes, wherever two or three meet in the name of Christ, Jesus said, I'm going to be there in your presence. So we might not, wherever we go, we might one day, folks, believe it or not, the day is coming that we might have to meet underground. It could be. I look for some persecution to come, and I, I really do. But you know what? If that happens, if two or three of us can get together, guess what? We're going to have church. Because the church is going to be right there. And we can meet, we can pray, we can plead the cause of Christ, we can pray for the rest of the church, we can read the scriptures, we only have the scriptures, some of us will have some verses memorized, so we can even meditate on the word of God as we're meeting together. We are being the church. So it's just not the building. It's you. So this COVID has caused me to realize this. A great appreciation for this worshiping in this place, but also a great appreciation for you, beloved. For you. Nothing can replace you. And I look forward to the time that we can all come to this place. We don't have to worry about the, the, those in the parking lot can come in here because st we still know and understand that it's a dangerous virus and some still have this fear. I understand it. I'm getting more uh, the same way. I'm getting to worry about it myself and my age and my wife. We have to take these precautions, don't we? But I'm looking forward to the time that we don't have to worry about that. We can just come back here and be a church again. But until then, I'm going to be with you. You are the church. Okay, you with me so far? The building. So the next outline is what? C. Three. C. I still want to put that three in there. No? But C. Oh, for correction. For correction. Now, I don't want you to think I'm like one of Job's three friends. Okay? Y'all know about Job's three friends. When Job started going through what he was going through with, the three so-called friends of Joseph, uh, Job, I'm sorry, come to him. And what did they say? You remember what he said? It's sin in your life, Job. It's sin. Get that sin out of it. Repent of that sin. Get your heart right with God, and he'll bless you again, Job. You just need to get your heart right with God. Get that. So repent of that sin. Now, we know from the scriptures that was not the case. Don't we know the reasons for what God was doing, allowing to happen to Job? And the Bible says that, man, he was a holy, pure, godly man. The Bible says there was no one. He eschewed, he avoided, he hated evil, he avoided sin every way he could. He prayed for his family. He was a godly, righteous man. Those three imbeciles, they didn't have a clue, did they? Now, I'm not saying that uh, God has sent this COVID to correct us, to correct you, to correct me personally. Because we know that sometimes sickness, diseases, and destructions, and disasters... It's just a result of the curse of sin because of the fall of our first parents, right? That's come upon us. But sometimes, sometimes God and his, his providence, his sovereignty, and his wisdom, he does allow these things for correction. So that leaves it up to us. Now, I believe our country is going through what it's going through because of sin, because we have forgotten God, because we've turned our backs upon him. And so it could be a part of all that as well. We don't know. We don't know the mind of God altogether. All we know is what we have in Scripture and how what He reveals to us through the Scriptures. But God sometimes allows COVID or other diseases or sickness or financial problems, you name it, accidents or whatever, and all that, for our good, for our correction. So that we'll just think on our ways and perhaps... Uh, take a turn on the path that we're walking, correct ourselves, because the Bible says if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. Doesn't it say that? So God is sometimes allowing these things or causes these things to happen in our life to get our attention and get our life straight with Him. Doesn't it happen? Look at Psalm 119, if you would. Psalm 119. I'll show you where I'm what I'm talking about here. Psalm 119. Look at verses 57. And listen what the psalmist said. 
They are my portion, O Lord. I have said that I would keep thy words. I entreated thy favor with my whole heart. Be merciful to me according to thy word. Now look at verse 59. I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. Do you see that? God is dealing with him, isn't he? Look if you would, and this is what the psalmist says to me. I thought on my ways and turned my feet into thy testimonies. Look at verse 67. Before I was afflicted, before I went through this storm, whatever it was, before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I have kept thy word. God got his attention, didn't he? God's way, got a way of getting our attention. Look at verse 71, same, same chapter, 71. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. Sometimes God allows us, or he ordains, he decrees for us to get sick. He might allow us to be afflicted in some way, some calamity, some problem, some trouble, some, whatever it is, whatever he chooses, just to get our attention, just start thinking about him. Putting our eyes upon him. To pray to him. To talk to him. To take out the word of God and to open it and start reading it and meditating upon his word. Isn't that what the psalmist here is saying, folks? He said that, didn't he? And then if you would, look at verse, it's another verse. It's 70, 70 not 70, but look at 75. I know, O Lord, that thy judgments are right. Whatever you do is right, Lord. Whatever happens to me is right. Whatever happens to us as a whole is right. COVID is right, Lord, if you ordain this. Why? Because that you in faithfulness has afflicted me. Ah, oh, he's doing it for our own good. Loving, Lord, merciful God. As bad as it is when you find yourselves going through a deep, dark valley of despair sickness or whatever it is God is doing it because he's drawing you to him he's saying this old boy won't pray to me any other way he's not going to pray because he's blessed he forgets me when he's blessed and everything is going so great and he's up on the clouds but I'm on, I miss his fellowship I want him to talk to me and commune with me so what, am I got, what have I got to do to make him to do that exactly God does that this is what his word is saying he wants us to think on our ways sometimes. Look if you look at Lamentations chapter 3. I read this just a few weeks ago. Lamentations is a little book written by the prophet, weeping prophet Jeremiah. He's seeing the, the destruction of Jerusalem. He's, his heart is broke. God is judged, the siege. We know all about that. So bad that the, he says that the, the ladies are even broiling their children that have died to feed the rest of the family because they're starving to death. And Jeremiah is saying, this. oh, he's weeping and his heart is breaking over this. Remember, he's been preaching for 40, 50 years, warning the people of Israel, the Judah, to turn back. And they wouldn't do it. So God says, well, I'm going to do what I have to do. And this is what happened. But then he says this. In this dialogue, in this, what he's saying, he's talking about the Lord. He's talking about Jehovah God. Verse 32, for example, though he calls grief, yet will he have compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. Aren't you glad God's a merciful God? For he doth not afflict willingly nor grieve the children of men. That simply means he doesn't enjoy hurting you, beating you up, turning you all apart. He's got a purpose for all of this. To crush on his feet all the prisons of the earth. To turn aside the right of a man before the face of the Most High. To subvert a man in his cause. The Lord approved. Now he's just not doing this randomly with no cause whatsoever. Who is he that saith, and it cometh to pass, when the Lord commandeth it not? Because God's sovereign, he's going to have his way. Out of the mouth of the Most High proceeds not evil and good? Sure it does. Wherefore, why then does a living man complain, a man for the punishment of his sins? Now listen to what he says. Listen to what the prophet says. He says, now look, look let's be reasonable about this. Let's be right, logical about this. He says, let us search and try our ways. Let's examine ourselves. All of, let us examine ourselves. Let us ask the Spirit of God to turn the searchlight upon our own hearts and our own ways. Let us search and try our ways and then 
Turn again to the Lord. Let us lift up our heart with our hands unto God in the heavens. We have transgressed and we have rebelled. Then there has not pardon. So God does allow this, you know, sometimes for our correction. Now, if that be the case because of COVID for the believer, we can find some good out of that, right? He's going to correct us while there's time, right? I'd rather be corrected right now, hadn't you? Examine myself and ask the Spirit of God, just like the psalmist did in Psalm 139. Lord, see if there be any wicked way in me. Lord, see if there's anything in my life that's not pleasing to you. And I want to be found in the right way. I'll correct that. I'll turn from that. So for correction, probably, probably, I don't know about you, but it has for me. During all of this shutdown, through all this crisis, through all this mess we are going through in this country, it's made me think. Boy, you know, I, I want to make sure my heart's right right now. Because I know when I leave this life, the next step is, the next stop is what? The Bema Seat of God. And I whole lot rather have my life cleaned up, straightened up right now to, to go into His presence. And there's some other things in my life that He's been talking to me about, and I didn't correct them. Right? You're getting mighty quiet, but you think about that. It could be through some things in my life that I am practicing. And for one thing, if, it is, if it's over oh, sin and I'm practicing, and something might be deaf, it might not even be a believer, right? If you find yourself not wanting to repent, having any remorse over that. But it might be some things in my life that I am doing, that God has been dealing with me about it, and I am not letting it go. It's unconfessed in my life. And I better start thinking about it because, listen, He's going to correct me one way or the other, right? Here or either, he's going to take me home one way or the other. But I don't want to have anything in my life that would not be pleasing to the Lord that I am doing when I leave this life and then I start to stand in his presence. That's exactly right. Unforgiveness toward my other brothers and sisters in Christ. If I you know someone's got ought in my life, I'm going to get it straight. Because I don't want to stand out before the Lord. And that things hadn't been right horizontally between my brothers and sisters in Christ. And think things are going to be all right, right vertically between me and the Lord. If I know of anyone that I have offended or upset with me, if there's any kind of un unforgiveness, unkind, anything related, I won't make it straight. So God is laying all these things for us to examine our own hearts, our own life. Because the next thing we might do, we might be standing in his presence. Right? So you're with me so far. Now, I don't know about you, but I can see some good coming out of this. What about you? God is a land. It's five are good. You with me so far? One, B, three, C. <laughs> you with me so far? All right, for the last point. What was the last letter? D. Desire. Desire. Now, listen to this. And I mean this with all of my heart. And I've heard more Christians say this, more pastors say this. Man, I'm going to tell you one thing, if nothing else, this has caused me to desire the rapture of the church more than I ever have before. This COVID, this mess we're going through, this shutdown, all this disease, all these deaths, all these horrible things that we have witnessed, all the atrocities, the calamity, everything's a result of this. And not only COVID, but look at our country, look at our nation, look at all we're going through. Man, it's caused me to have a desire to be with the Lord like I've never had before. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Do you see that? It has, hasn't it? This whole world is not our home. We're just uh, traveling through. I'm, I'm, lo I'm looking forward to going to be with the Lord, aren't you? Now, I'm, I'm not talking about, I hope he's not getting up a load right now. You know, that I'm saying the rapture, the upper taker. Not the undertaker, but God will have his way and will in all of our lives, right? But it's given me a desire, a desire for the rapture, the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ like I've never had before. I find myself praying just like John did at the close of the Revelation. When Jesus said, Behold, I come quickly, and my, Lord, my reward is with me. And what did the Apostle John say? Even so, amen. Come on, Lord Jesus, come quickly. He was ready to see the Lord come right then, right? Hasn't this, hasn't this created a desire in your heart? For, if you're a believer, it's got to be. If you know the Lord Jesus Christ, if you're saved, if you're born again, you don't want to go through this mess, do you? 
Hasn't it given you a desire, a real, real strong desire to hear that trumpet sound for Jesus to come back and take us out of this mess? It's also given me one more desire, and I'll close this. It's given me a desire to try to reach as many in my family and my friends as I possibly can in these last days. I don't want them to be left behind. In that passage of the scripture we read a few minutes ago, uh, Lamentations chapter, I mean, Jeremiah chapter 29. He said something, and when I, when I read it, and this is the passage, then part of the passage we didn't read. Read the rest of the chapter and you'll see this. But he said something. And just rung a bell in my thinking. He says that those people that were not obedient, that were going to be left behind in Jerusalem, they were going to be punished, they were going to be slaughtered, they were going to be killed. Why? Because he said, they did not heed my words. Jeremiah said, they did not heed my words. So the others are going to be saved. They're going to be taken into Babylon, right? God says, I'm going to bless you. Just go and live life to the fullest. Pray. Seek my face. I'm going to be there for you. I'll bring you back at the appointed time. But those that did not heed my words, those that listened to the false prophets, the false words, the message that did not come from me, they're going to be left behind. And folks, what am I saying? We've got the truth. We've got the word of God. We've got, we've got something that we need to warn people with. Hasn't this, if, if nothing else, some good that's come out of this, has caused people to start asking questions, to have concerns like they never have before. You have got the greatest, perfect, most perfect opportunity you've ever had to talk to people about Jesus Christ and his love for them. Isn't that good? Isn't that good? God has brought all this. He is, he's open. We ought to be excited because we're about to see the Lord come back. But it ought to give us a desire to see that, but also a desire to win so many more others to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ as well. Are you sharing today? Are you sharing today? Giving out tracts. We better start doing it, folks, because we are in the last seconds of the last days. I believe that for all my heart. So all things, even COVID, as bad as it is, work together for the good of those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. That means you if you know Christ. Let's stand. Praise the Lord. Father, Lord, we praise you. We thank you for your blessings, for your mercy, for your grace, for your love. And even, Lord, for all these various trials and troubles that we find ourselves going through. Because we know it's for our own good. We know, Lord, to be honest about it, it's not good, but it's, you're going to use it to cause it for our good. And so, Lord, we can just praise you for that and thank you for that. Somehow you're going to bring good out of this for each one of us who know you and love you. And, Lord, the end result, at the end of the day, you want us to be conformed to the image of your Son, Jesus Christ. So, Lord, help us to learn from the text we've studied this morning and shared with this morning. And to grow from that as well. And Lord, to know also, Lord, that you've got everything in control. Nothing's happening by accident. Nothing is happening outside of your plan. And again, it's all for our good. Now, Lord, that's for the believers. That's for those who have trusted you. That's for those who are saved, born again. It could be some listen to this message, Lord, that's never put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, we know from your word you are the only way into the presence of the Father. You are the only way that's forgiveness for our sins. Lord, you suffered, you bled, you died on Calvary's cross, you was buried, you was raised again the third day, Lord, to pay the ultimate price for my sins, for the sins of all those who will just believe on you. You made that one way of salvation, Lord. So I pray, Lord, if there's any listening to this message today, those that might be watching social media, if they have not invited Jesus Christ to be their personal Lord and Savior, they would do it right now and do it before this service is over. Your word tells us that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. May many, many, many right now call upon you and be saved. And we'll thank you, Lord, for all you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.